Welcome to Lower Interest Section of the Apple Beginning of Every One of These Hate Cast. My nose is trying to kill me. I have a sinus infection. And there's my mess of dishes that I leave behind in my wake every time that I eat for gains. Now, in this episode, I am joined by Jamie Lewis. We do a Q&A. It's been a while since we've done one of those things. I want to do one more uh, here at a later point, so I will go ahead and tease that when it's ready. But... For this one, uh, we kind of go over the change from castandpain.blogspot over to Plague of Strength for Jamie specifically. Uh, we have some interesting and entertaining questions for you guys. We also have some articles you've been requesting that are now actually out. So the pull-up article uh, Jamie has written has been published. Also, his thoughts on New, Year re New Year's resolutions are also talked about in this video. And we have links to the articles he's written on the subject in the description box below. Uh, along with that, you will find a 25 before I speak out of turn. Let me check. Oh, yes, I'm killing time. So, uh, get healthy this weekend. Helios BOGO. So, Helios is on BOGO. Um, very professional. I know it's on sale at all times. Uh, I don't need to check my email to, to reassure myself of me saying the right thing. We also have a 25% off code on top of the already low, low price of buy one Helios, get another one absolutely free. So you can stack those. We get those questions all the time. Yes, you can stack large discount codes with the BOGOs. That's why we put it in the email. So with that being said, um, as always, you can get a f chance to win a fee free Ferox in our secret Facebook group. Everybody should be signed up to that. Everybody should be signed up to our newsletter. And without further ado, I'm going to just go ahead and let you jump on into the episode. Enjoy the show. discuss the snake diet because if so i gotta bring up the uh details of it uh you know uh, i think we can save that for another uh podcast by the way i recorded in the middle of that because editing magic doesn't happen here we're just gonna leave it in so welcome to the hate cast oh <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to catch people off guard a little bit. Welcome to the newest episode of the Hatecast. Uh, this is your host, Bryce Allen. I am joined by Jamie Lewis. We are going to do a Q&A. That sounded rehearsed, but I promise you it was on the fly. So, uh, first and foremost, you recently wrote a blog article about yes. on Plague of Strength, by the way. If you have not... Plague of Strength! Played, yes. Plague of Strength. If you have not checked it out, I'm going to link it in the description box below. This time, I actually will. I forgot last time. You tore me apart. I know I forgot. Don't worry about it. So, um, you just, just wrote about using... tore chaos. your asshole like tissue paper, did they? Hell yeah, the rhino si the The internet's rhino-sized dick got shoved so far up my ass that now I can't shit or sit for a week. So Wow. Because people, people literally act like my mistakes... Are the biggest they've ever seen. It's it's almost like I'm running for office or something, and I I tweeted about a a, a gay joke or something like ten years ago. That's how that's Dude, how serious. I saw a thread yesterday. Mel showed it to me, and I'm like, I don't understand why you're so pissed off. It was some guy asking if uh, barefoot Contessa or barefoot Tessa, whatever the fuck her name is. If she meant to, say, put a ham in the fridge for 24 hours rather than the oven. Because 24 hours does, I will admit, seem like an awful long time to put a fridge in the oven. Or to put a, a ham in the oven. And, See, uh, now they're, they're going to tear you apart for saying fridge in the oven. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> so he asked this question, like, surely you meant put it in the oven. And everybody, it was like a 500 comment thread about mansplaining. And I was like, I... I don't know that that's mansplaining, but I don't understand why you guys are so goddamn angry. Like, I, would, I don't know how long it takes to cook a ham because I don't like fucking ham, and I would use my smoker like an adult with dignity and self-respect. But, uh, you know, I, I'd like, 
I, the whole thing just didn't. I, the, everybody just loses their shit all day long on the internet. It's fucking retarded. I know, I know. I was just talking with Wayne the other day about somebody going into a bar. This would never happen, by the way. Somebody going into the bar and then just shouting everything that they said in their re- uh, Yelp review out loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How fast they would be escorted off the property. Um, or like, or, or these guys will talk shit to, you know, not even me, but like other strength authorities. You know, they'll just talk mad. Oh, you're on fucking gear this, and you don't know what you're talking about that. And it's like, motherfucker, if you're not prepared to do it in public, don't do it on the internet. Like, I or just like, if you really feel that strongly, then make a point to go and confront that person in public, and then prepare to get your fucking ass kicked. By the way, whatever Castle- happened... Unless it's Brad Castleberry, in which case he just, like, <laughs> curls into the fetal position and starts weeping. Yeah, we'll go ahead and schedule that. Never gets back to you. Um, yeah, fuck. That, that <laughs> poor guy, though, apparently he's, like, mentally challenged or something. Man, you know what? He's big, he's muscular, he's aesthetic. He should just go with that. He should stop trying to, like... Like, I get it, man. He got insta-famous, you know? Like... People are people love seeing him do these stupid wacky stuff, but at the same time, they're all like if you really look into it, you can tell he's not. I mean, three fifteen first of all doesn't wiggle as much as the fucking four plates, five plates that he's putting up. You know, let's get that out there. I I do believe that he uses real weight in some of his videos. I do believe he also uses fake weight in a lot of them. But, hey, I'm calling you out. Not that I matter in the strength and fitness world, but calling you out, Castleberry. Like, you haven't been called out enough. But Whatever, Juji Fruit. Does Juji Fruits do that as well, or is Juji Fruits lift to real weights? Um, you know, I, I, think, I think he uses real weight. I mean... Okay. I, he isn't... If he does use fake weight, he isn't uh, blatant about it like um, like Brad is. Like it's it's pretty blatant in some of his videos that it's just it's fake weight. And that's I mean, hey, Slay Queen, it's your hustle, man. Fucking, back. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. Let Let's talk about chaos magic then. Could you Could you repeat that though and explain what the fuck you just said? I said Slay, Slay? Queen. That's your Slay Queen. Yas. I'm trying to be wow, hip with I, the kids. Isn't Yas Queen... That that died years ago, didn't it? Yeah, I'm a little behind in the times, man. I, I Like I said, I beat to my own drum. I mean, I don't fucking know. Because I know that was popular in, in my dark years, and uh, I definitely put my fist directly through an entire wall, like both sides of the... Uh, of the wall because I couldn't stand to hear that fucking phrase one more time. All right, guys, you know what? Go ahead and yas queen in the chat or in the comment section below. Um, let's see if we can't get. <laughs> it doesn't bother phone. me that much anymore, <laughs> and also I'm not I'm not violently drunk right now, so I'm not gonna. It's a lucky thing that I didn't fucking hit a two by four because <laughs> I mean you hit you hit a two by four like on that on the uh, on the the short side rather than the wide side. You're gonna break your fucking hand. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about your newest blog post real quick, and then let's we'll jump talk into about it. So Alrighty. you wrote a blog post about set goals or use chaos magic. What's that about? Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's unpack the this. I will uh, yes. Let's. Uh, what is the other phrase they use instead of unpacking it? Let's jump into this. Let's jump in. Well, this. whatever. Yeah. So uh, that started because there's that uh, group of. Uh, closeted homosexual Nazis, and their Boy Scout leader tends to rip me off a lot. And uh, oh, he no. continually reposts about like how you shouldn't tell other people your goals. And he made that video within, like, two, within two days of me posting it, an article about why you shouldn't make goals, which was based on an article I had written seven years prior that gave all the science... And the occult reasoning behind not posting your goal, or between behind not telling other people your goals. Yeah, I'm not going to go into all the details. Just don't fucking do it. If you is this want the to, same you guy can... with a pull-up article. What's that? 
Is this the same guy with a pull-up article? It's the same guy with a pull-up article, yeah. So, uh, okay, cool. So, I, um, so, in response to that, I posted about how, if you, like, here's the reasons why you shouldn't fucking tell other people your goals, and then, uh, and then posted the links. And then, it occurred to me, people are gonna fucking do it anyway, and I know how to actually set goals and achieve those goals using chaos magic. Which I know sounds like, you know, I, I probably like masturbate using crystals and I smell of patchouli, but it's actually a thing that works, and it's not, it's not anything that I happen to like just drag out of my ass one day, or like I bought a bunch of Blackcraft shit and then decided to like start playing with incense. It like this is something that was, it's magic has existed obviously for you know as long as humans have been around. And um, there was a guy named Austin Osmond Spare who, um, or o Osmond Austin, uh, it's Austin Osmond Spare. I always forget how, what the order of his name is. But he, um, he basically used some of Crowley's ideas and then mixed it together with more ancient magical rites in order to create the basis of chaos magic, which is essentially just using your the force of your will to change the universe around you. And, um, and so okay. for, for anybody who is doubting me in this, Grant Morrison actually has a great talk that he gave about how he used chaos magic. He wrote himself into a comic book called The Invisibles. Uh, and at the time, he, he was just tinkering with chaos magic in terms of writing the book. So he wrote himself into the book... And all the shit that was happening to the character in the book started happening to him in real life. He started, like, pulling really hot girls, even though he was a bald, like, a bald white guy in a time when being a bald white guy was not, like, a popular thing. Right. Uh, he, um, them, so. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so, um, so he's pulling all these hot girls. He's having all this success, just like his character in the comic. And then, uh, then he put his character into this situation where he, like, exploded both of his lungs and was, like, being held against his will in, like, some sort of... I I've never read The, the Invisibles. I I'm just telling you secondhand what the story is. In any right. event, that happened to him. Like, he, he developed some horrible fucking problem with his lungs. He was trapped in this fucking hospital for, like, six months write himself, his character, out of the problem in order to resolve the issue in real life. And it happened. And there's a saying, as above, so below, which basically means that anything that happens on a macro level will happen on a micro level. They reflect each other. Right. And uh, Also, so this coincidentally, was, the premise behind the movie. But go ahead. Exactly. Which is an excellent movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, and... and um, so... So going back to what I was saying is that you can actually set a goal. You don't tell anybody about it. And I give the way that you actually – so you make, a, you make a statement of intent, which could be anything. It could be like, uh, I want to own a 74-inch television within two weeks. Uh, so you will write it as a statement, which is, it is my will to own a television that's 74 inches in two, within two weeks. And then the way Grant Morrison does it, and some people do it, although I don't, uh, he, like, I leave the vowels in. Some people take the vowels out. Then you take all the repeated letters out, because you've written this all down. Right. Then you jumble the letters, and then you take those, the letters that are left, and you write them into a sigil, which is, uh, it's, a, it's like a magical mark. But uh, basically, any time you've ever looked at a trademark of any kind, like the Volkswagen symbol, is a sigil. The SS Thunderbolts on on the lapels of the SS in the, for the Nazis, those were widely acknowledged to be an actual sigil. Um, the Thunderbolts are runes. And um, right. so you're basically making a magical symbol out of the letters of your statement of intent. And uh, and then once you're done with it, you I, I give the whole process of it. You, you essentially meditate upon that sigil, and then you destroy the sigil. And you, you try not to think about it. And you will actually, it, it, it takes some practice like anything, but you will actually see that come to fruition. 
And uh, so basically what I said was start with, with some simple shit that you're reasonably sure you'll achieve anyway. And then, um, <clears throat> and then move on to bigger and better things. And over time, you'll hone your skills. And you basically all it's doing is, for anybody who's just rolling their eyes right now, you're not doing anything magical like Harry Potter style magic. What you're doing is you're actually creating inside yourself an energy that is so focused that it what it does is it affects the the universe on a quantum level and changes the universe to match your will. And uh, there have been numerous things that have come out in quantum physics recently that, that are actually started to prove that simply by thinking a thing, you make that thing more likely to occur. So the more you think about it and the more intently you think about it, the more likely it is to occur. Also, and, if you uh, look at the psychology of stuff like wishboards, too, which have been around forever, by the way. You know, you put something on your your, your wishboards. You see these in the I, – I know that's the wrong uh, – what is it, the the boards that they put up their dreams on or whatever? Uh, are you talking about the shit they do in The Secret? I'm talking about the shit they do in every teenage movie ever. That uh, I, I'm not really familiar now. with that. Uh, like, that was after my time, so okay. I'm not real. I think it has to do with The Secret. I've never actually seen a wish board in my life. Well, it's this board you put it up on. It's all your dreams and stuff like that. Now, I know people are going to... Uh, uh, tear me apart in the comments because I forget what to call it. I, it's, it'll be fine. Like I look forward to your Reddit thread. But <laughs> it, you put it up there, and then you know you start to subconsciously make moves in your life that push you towards that goal, right? Um, that's kind of been that's that's on the psychology level of this, and you know entrepreneurs and everything have been doing this for a long time, right? Uh, some of them actually uh, lie about their uh, credentials on their resume, and they end up landing themselves this fantastic job that leads them into a, a future prosper. Like, it's it's all about, you know, making things happen for yourself, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Like, nice. worst case scenario, like, even if you don't believe in this stuff, if you think it's a little frou-frou and everything like that, you need to, I mean, what's it going to do? It's going to cost you, what, 30 minutes? It's going to cost you an hour? I mean, come on. Like, fucking just try it. But, yeah. And at the, at the very least, you develop the skill to meditate. Um, yeah. Which I, think, which I think is a useful skill. Um, and I'm, not, I'm really not one for meditation. The, the chaos magician that I cited in my article uh, says that you're supposed to meditate on your sigil until you, like, lose the ability to breathe or something like that. I, I, I don't have that kind of time or that that type of... Uh, I, I'm just not built for that. I'm a sprinter. I'm not a marathon runner. So I basically just do it until I get bored or drowsy and then I stop. Um, but all of it is useful and, and even if it's just the ability to really decide what you want in life and and then set yourself on a path for that. I think even people have a hard time with that. So I think it's a good thing. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, there, and I'm sure there's going to be in the comments, yeah, well, if if he's so fucking, if he's good at chaos magic, chaos magic for, for money, and I never, it's, I mean, other than laughing about it, I don't have, it, it wouldn't occur to me to do that. Um, and that actually was a point that Michael Ford made in one of his books. Or, yeah. Actually, I don't, it wasn't Michael Ford, but it was somebody else. Like, if if uh, if you're so good at magic, why aren't you rich? It's because, as a general rule, people that are into the occult aren't really money motivated. I, I think that people who are money motivated are typically pretty shallow, um, which is why they're money motivated. But um, yeah. So, but uh, it, if you if a shallow person can acquire enough enough depth of character to uh, to utilize chaos magic, then, you know, more power to them. I mean, shit, it worked for, uh, it, it's worked for plenty of people in the past. I just don't think that they talk about their occult leanings, so. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, vision board. Get wrecked. Um, so. <laughs> oh, that's R-E-K-T. I know, I know that's yeah. the, uh, that's how the cool kids are spelling it these days. 
Yeah, that's actually a phrase I don't mind. But uh, I did. Want oh, to oh! oh I, by the way, I just I have to brag for a second, which is completely off topic. Oh, you're fine because Go I ahead. want because I want to impress the kids. Uh, typically, my kill death ratio in Call of Duty World War Two is about. It's about even. It's about, like, I generally go, like, 15-15. Because I'm usually trying to achieve, like, uh, achieve the objectives and things like that, and so the, right. my kill-death ratio falls by the wayside. I, for whatever reason, went on such a fuck Like, I was just... I was taking handfuls of Genius and uh, <laughs> Red Sky and playing and playing uh, Call of Duty World War II. The, uh, there's one, it's called War, where you just... Uh, or Ground War, where you have these objectives you have... Yeah. With mangling kids to the point where I got bored of playing and quit. I went like fifty-one and three in one game and was like, I don't even know why I'm fucking playing this anymore. I have officially achieved god level. Uh, so that's the first time that I've ever like done that because I think that's usually the purview of like twelve-year-olds whose dicks don't get hard, so they have a lot of time on their hands to play Call of Duty. But uh, yeah, They're I had in front of me. <laughs> But man, or, uh, or it could be 22-year-olds whose dicks don't get hard, and so they have plenty of time to play Call of Duty. Come on. 28. I'm approaching 30. Uh, so, I did want to kind of get your... I did want to kind of get your opinion on this. What do you think about meditation? Like, as a, as a general practice? I think it's uh, it's generally a useful practice. Like with anything, you can take it way too far, and uh, I saved an article recently for, sometimes I just save articles and I don't know why, Uh, but I figured it would come in useful later, and it was about this British guy who, uh, like, went on some sort of quest to become this, like, great Buddhist monk, and he woke up, like, say, I guess he was there a, a couple of months, he woke up like having no recollection of the previous week in a psych ward where he was on a where he was on a 72 hour hold and apparently he had meditated to the point where he had a psychotic break and he just started fucking attacking people uh, which meditation I'm, goals yeah which I then <laughs> shared with a guy who I know who is very big into psychedelics and recently had to go you know he had to go take a weekend off from life and he told me about all the shit that happened while he was meditating from taking a week off from life. And I was like, "Man, uh, you know, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to burst his bubble, but <laughs> like to tell somebody they had a psychotic break while they were in a mental institution probably isn't the nicest thing to do." But I was like, Whoa. "Yeah, maybe meditate less yeah. would be a good thing." Because it's not actually good for for people with like a profound mental illness. It it's very bad to meditate. So because uh, you know all they do is just get lost in their thoughts and then turn into a fucking psychopath. So uh, yeah, not I, only that. I, I and I'm not a mental health professional. So all I can do is speak to my own like you know, borderline sociopathy. Uh, and, uh, and, like, I don't really have the ability to meditate for long periods of time. But for people who have problems with depression, uh, they should not be meditating. It's See, not I, uh, I, my, my, uh, my mind is just too loud. You know, I'm, I tried. I tried really hard. And um, I just, I can't get to the point of meditation. I guess I would need to. I know what's big in the meditation world right now is those sensory deprivation tanks. Uh, I guess I guess that would be the way I would have to do it. But I just don't have ten thousand dollars to install one of those in my house. Nor do I want to pay the electricity. Nor do I want to pay for the water. It's just a bunch of stuff I don't want to pay for. So I'm gonna just put it by the wayside. I'm good. Like, have you ever tried uh, like Buddhist breathing techniques? I have not. Uh, I'm I'm sure they would be beneficial, but um, but I haven't. What 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 is a Buddhist breathing technique? Oh, the simplest breathing technique, and it's actually the only form of meditation I've ever used that works for worth a shit, is um, and there are a variety of different ways to do it. Some people call it the four six seven technique. I, like I generally do it, so you you count your breaths. So you count, like I start with a four count. So you count, you breathe in for a four count, you hold it for a four count, you breathe out for a four count, you hold it for a four count. Do that for a few breaths, then you go to five, then to six, then to seven, then to eight, then to nine. I think the highest I've ever gotten was 12. 
the, it's fun to do before you get a physical because you can game the shit out of it. You can lower your pulse to like, I've gotten it to the upper thirties before doing that. Oh yeah, um, no, I I know exactly what that is because my dad was in the navy, and that's how they taught him to hold his breath for long periods of time. It actually lowers your pulse. Yeah, I I I know that portion of it. So ah, well, there you go. And when ah. I was when I was di- diagnosed with insomnia, when they had all those electric diodes, right? They sent me to a child psychologist to see if there was something going on upstairs to see if I was, uh, you know, if that was the cause for the insomnia. And breathing techniques is actually something that she went over. Uh, you know, she said, you know, if you can count your breaths at night, uh, generally you can fall asleep faster. Which, by the way, is a pretty good little technique to get yourself some deeper sleep. For those of you with uh, active minds such as myself. But, um, yeah, I'm very familiar with that portion of it. But I didn't know it was it had Buddhist roots. So that's pretty cool. Huh. Um... Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So I think we can move on into the actual Q&A part because that was a, uh, a side question. So you ready for that? I am absolutely ready. There we go. Was there anyone that made you uncomfortable in prison? Uh, like sexual? Well, I guess you don't have any way to clarify this. Uh, no, no, not really. I... Um, I, I was uncomfortable when I go to the med block because the because uh, I was on uh, inventory control, so uh, I, I took the inventory control job because we get fed on the job. Uh, it was all the milk you could drink, and they had dumbbells down at the uh, warehouse, so we could like lift while we were working out. Right. Um, and we'd have to go and deliver shit to the med block, and that's where all the fucking nutters are. And uh, oh, yeah. those people are genuinely and profoundly insane. And uh, and I don't think that being in jail is really helping them at all. Um, if anything, that block makes people crazier because they put you into this thing called a turtle suit, which is uh, it's basically a wool blanket uh, that they wrap around you and then uh, lock you into with Velcro, and then they put straps over your shoulders so you can't you can't get it off. And uh, yeah, yeah, at, which I would think would make me crazy because then I'd be hot, and you got to sleep on a uh, on a bear on a bear cot. With no with no mattress and it, it's a fucking mess. What happened? There was a guy in there. Oh my god! I well here's here's where I'm co- going with that itch. Uh, there was a guy in there called Torch. Have I told this story already? No, you haven't actually. Go ahead. So he was called the Torch, and you you guys can Google this. It's easy to find. He um he was from the Philadelphia area. I th- he lived near the King of Prussia Mall, I think. He, uh, he stabbed his girlfriend a whole shitload of times. She didn't die, so he ran her over a bunch with the car and killed her. And then he went on the run to uh, Pittsburgh. And they were sending CEOs from the jail to go, like, search Pittsburgh for him, which I've never heard of. But I guess his crime was so egregious they really wanted to hunt him down. And so uh, before they caught him, he tried to kill himself by dousing himself in lighter fluid and setting himself on fire. Except all he succeeded in doing was giving himself third-degree burns all over his body and uh, burning off his eyelids. So uh, he's on the med block of this jail with just huge piles of skin underneath his bunk. Because before I was on uh, the IC, I was on um, I was on the, the uh, sanitation team, and uh, there were guys who just did med block for sanitation, which was the worst fucking job. Yeah. And because they were always like cleaning up shit, because people would make like shit helmets and stuff, and they'd have to go in and clean this guy's cell, all the dead skin from underneath his bunk. And uh, wait, did he you just say? Fuck- did you say they were cleaning up r- r- Reddit? Did you say they were cleaning up their office? <laughs> Look at you, clever boy. Okay, we're going. So, uh, <laughs> so he would have these piles of dead skin under his bunk. And he was constantly on suicide watch because he kept trying to kill himself because he failed. So he'd like pull when they put him on a, like a higher level so he could actually have a mattress. He would pull the thread out of the mattress and he yeah. tried to hang himself with that. Except that thread is specifically made to break break when you put any uh, tension on it. So he didn't. He fa- he, could, he just kept failing and killing himself. But uh, like people like that make me uncomfortable. But like uh, there was nobody scary in jail. It. Um, Wow. Uh, like all the all the like genuine criminals were on a specific high bail block, and we didn't interact with them at all. Yeah, but you get along with pretty much everybody, don't you? 
I mean, so you wouldn't you wouldn't have a problem with some guy being, you know, all, all friendly with you or something, right? I mean, you're not real. You're not a bad. Oh guy. no! I mean, there were gay. There were gay. There there were gay guys in there, and uh, like I was actually surprised. Like uh, a, a lot of them wouldn't tap off because like, they they do this thing where you can tap off a block and like just ask to be put in pr- protective custody. Right. And uh, gay guys will do that a lot, so they can go to the gay block. And uh, and but there were a lot of like openly and flamboyantly gay guys who were just on regular blocks in there, and nobody really fucked with them. So that was good. Yeah. Well, you know, it is 2018. Well, it's 2019. But they, by the way, the guys guys don't fuck guys in county jail. Uh, the chicks are all fucking, but the guys don't. They, they don't mess with each other. They just leave each other alone. Like oh, you yeah. get the occasional fight. Uh, somebody heated up. Uh, somebody heated up water for like twenty minutes in the uh, in the microwave and threw it in this kid's face and like uh, like melted one of his eyeballs. But uh, that was what the, a uh, savage using water to attack somebody. What a savage! Oh, it, dude, <laughs> the people in jail are the biggest fucking pussies you'll ever meet. All right. Well, I think that uh, answered that. Let's go to this one. Now, this one's a bit interesting because I believe there's been this talk of your uh, water cutting protocol before. Like, you have okay. a powerlifting water cutting protocol? Yes. Uh, we we got a question. What is Jamie Lewis's uh, water cutting protocol for powerlifting if there is one? So, yeah, I've written about it. It's in a book called uh, uh, Prepare for War. But... um. It's essentially uh, you consume – you overconsume water for the, a couple of days before uh, before weigh-ins. I always do 24-hour weigh-ins. I've never done a water. Um, so we'll say the weigh-in, just for the sake of this, will be at 10 a.m. Right. So you overconsume water up until the – so you got the 10 a.m. prior, the 24-hour mark – and then, and then we'll call it like the the night before that. So at, at 12, 12 midnight, the night before you're really starting your water cut, you stop over consuming. You're not drinking three gallons of water anymore, two gallons or three gallons of water anymore. Um, starting that day, from from the time you wake up until 5 p.m. the 5 p.m. before the um, before the weigh-in, you will drink maybe like a liter and a half of water that day, and only have protein shakes. And then um, at 5 p.m., you stop eating and drinking. Um, you just go to sleep normally. I wake up at 4.30 in the morning to start my water cut, 4 or 4.30. And I do, um, I do hot baths uh, until, until I'm on weight. So I just make the water as hot as I can possibly stand it. To where, like, you have to kind of dab your toe in and then dip your toe in and then put your whole foot in and your skin is screaming. And then sticking your asshole and your balls in the water is about the worst thing that's ever happened because it feels like somebody's <laughs> taking a blowtorch to your junk. But that hot. So I do that and submerge my, as much of my body as I can, including as much of my head as I can because your body fights real hard to keep your head cool because you don't want to cook your brain. Right. So you get a lot of water that way. And uh, you just keep doing that. Do not take a cool shower because your body just reabsorbs the water through your skin. Um, and you just keep doing that until you – simple. Yeah. I will say that um, one of the worst things that you could possibly do for f- something like a uh, weigh-in or twenty or a water cut or something for powerlifting or MMA or whatever have you sport, right? Except for bodybuilding because that's a little bit different. Is uh, take a hardcore diuretic. That will decrease performance, and that is something you do not want. So you want to be prepared to do a water cut instead of using a diuretic to have a shortcut. I've seen it time and time again, guys. Do not use these harsh diuretics for a 24-hour weigh-in. It doesn't make any sense. Do not do it. So that's my little piece of advice. I've never messed with LASIK because it seems like too many fucking things could go wrong. Well, you know, uh, LASIK is, uh, I believe, the potassium-sparing diuretic, right? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is... What the main thing you have to worry about is sodium depletion, right? 
which if you're going for a drier look, and if you're looking to shed the most amount of water, that's fine. But at the same time, when your sodium depletes, you're going to end up losing performance. So again, like I said, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. Like you have to, and you have to pound sodium. You have to pound sodium like those guys on the gay block. You have to pound sodium whenever you, uh, whenever you, you lose it like that because it just goes. There's no way. I mean, I see people fucking eating bouillon cubes and stuff like that whenever they take Lasix. So it's fucking, it's harsh, man. Uh, but I think we can, we can move into the next question. That's pretty cool water cutting. Uh, you know, people do the sauna. So would the sauna be a, a good uh, alternative for a hot shower? The, or a um, hot bath? I, uh, I have not had the same kind of success with a, with a sauna that I have with a hot bath. And um, uh, the reason for that is personal. I feel like I'm being suffocated when I'm in a sauna. Um, and the dry sauna, not so much. In a, in a, um, in a steam room, I feel like I'm being fucking suffocated. And uh, I don't shed as much water in a dry sauna. I, I have done the dry sauna, and I, I have a fairly funny story where uh, I could not get the last pound off. Um, <laughs> like I had, done, I had done hot baths for hours. I had a half hour left, and I had to get this pound off, and I could not get it off. So I put on a sauna suit. I wrapped my head in, um, in saran wrap and uh, then wrapped my hands in saran wrap and my feet in saran wrap so no heat could what escape. What the fuck? And then I went into a dry sauna. I put on I Think It's Freaky by DeAntward and literally danced in circles the entire time, <laughs> like for that half hour, like violently danced in the dry sauna and point at him and go, get the fuck out. And then I just go back to dancing around in a circle like a maniac, and I made weight. So, Jesus Christ. So you've, yeah. al you've always been this little bundled up psychopath, pretty much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never been anything else. This is, everybody thinks this is a, like a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. This is just me. Oh. Okay, well that leads us on to the next question. How would you cut weight as fast as possible? And I'm guessing they're meaning body fat, right? Because we can't clarify once they're asked. Um, I probably should. Fuck it. Uh, if, if there is a way, same with bulking. How how would you gain? I'm guessing they're how I'm guessing they're asking how would you gain the most amount of weight as possible in a short amount of time. So I'm gonna let you cover this one first, and then I have my uh, little tidbit. Okay, I'm not gonna give up the the three. I've got a breakfast, lunch, and dinner bulking meal uh, like recipe blog that I'm that I'm working on that is uh, beyond epic. I took one of the uh, I took one of the recipes from a burger place in in uh, Chicago that has a metal theme, and uh, they have I I don't want to give it away, but I want to I'm just going to say what it is. Uh, the other two I will not say. That's okay. But it's it's called the Integrity Burger. So I'm going to try to remake this thing. Integrity is a hardcore band from uh, Cleveland. Um, right. They uh, that uh, probably, I don't know, some of the people who are listening have heard of them. I've heard um, of them. Oh, okay, awesome. So For this what? burger, dude, uh, first off, the, it's, the place is called Kuma's. It's in Chicago. It's fucking awesome from everything I've heard. And, uh, and Mel and I are supposed to go... Next month, because we're for Valentine's Day, we're going to go see Evil Dead the Musical in Chicago, and uh, so this burger is ch uh, chorizo gravy on top of a f fried chicken breast, which is on top of an eight ounce burger, and uh, <laughs> I, I like I'm just my mouth is watering right now having said that. Oh yeah. my god, it just sounds phenomenal. And uh, so that's going to be the dinner recipe. And then I've got two other recipes. So I, like, But basically what it comes down to is making yourself full at all times. So find right. food that you fucking like. Um, it comes down to calories at the end of the day, but protein still has to be a primary concern. So every meal you eat has to have meat in it. Yeah. Um, and then you know, Let's talk just, about that for a minute. So... 
something I want to I want to get your opinion on before we go deeper into this. Um, this is just my opinion, mind you, right? As long as you have the the minimum amount of fat necessary, like I, I'm of course more of a fan of higher fat foods because it's more to my taste buds, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But but as long as you have the minimum amount of fat and you meet your protein requirements, are you of the same opinion I am? Is like most of the macros when you're bulking are somewhat seemingly unimportant. Like as long as you meet your calorie, your like your energy goals and your protein goals, and you have that fat in there, the rest is largely insignificant details. Yeah, there's there have actually been a number of studies, and I've actually cited the studies that show that once you've achieved your um, your your like protein requirement, whatever that is, um, the actual calorie content of the remainder of it is inconsequential. Yeah. Um, okay, and I I think that. That's partly untrue because clearly there are hormonal changes that you can make with saturated fat and cholesterol you can't make with, you know, table sugar. Sure. But, um, but yeah, it, it's really just comes down to finding stuff that you love to fucking eat and eating the shit out of it. Um, everybody's got their own thing. But I would say, and this is the recommendation that I give to kids who are asking me this question, because I, lately I've had a, a bunch of kids like, I, I'm really having trouble gaining weight. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, how much money do you have to spend a day on food? And, you know, they'll, they'll generally say, well, well, you know, I eat at home, but I, I could get 10 bucks, and I'm like, all right, cool. So here's what you do. Every time you pass a McDonald's, get three things off the dollar menu. That's three times you pass McDonald's in a, in a day. You can get three things off the dollar menu. Get three hamburgers, three grilled chicken, or three fried chicken sandwiches, whatever it is. Right then and there, you're, you know, you're getting... Uh, we'll just say in, in a hamburger or a grilled chicken sandwich, you're getting like 15 grams of protein. So you're getting 45 grams of protein right there and a shitload of calories and fat. Yeah. And um, and that's three times a day. So you're already looking at an extra 135 grams of protein and probably an extra you know 2,000 calories just from spending $9 a day. Yeah. And not only that, but, uh, you know, McDonald's has been like a staple in bodybuilding and fitness stuff because it's kind of, I, I'm not going to say the perfect ratio of fats, you know, carbs and, and protein when it comes to like packing on mass, you know, but it happens to be the exact right amount of calories to get you where you need to go because everything in McDonald's, I mean, even the cheap stuff, you know, if we're talking budget wise, is, is packed full of calories, and it really is something that people just kind of skip over because they think that eating one cheeseburger is going to make you this unhealthy piece of, piece of shit. And you and I both know that ain't that's not how it works. You know? No, I, although I will say that I, I, I have achieved a level of size that is, for my frame, perhaps a bit too dense. Because I, I, like, I ran down the stairs this morning racing the cat, and then bent over to pick one of her toys up off the ground, and I almost passed out. Uh, like I was already, I was breathing hard from racing the cat down the fucking stairs, <laughs> and then like bending over because my hamstrings and my legs are so tight, and then like my abs cramped up, and like I was like, all right, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying I'm too big, but I, maybe I need to start figuring out how to shape the what I got differently so that it's maybe a little easier to like tie my shoes because i got to take my shoes off to tie them right now and that's oh, yeah. that's a pain well man i mean hey cutting season's coming up you could you could you could have the vascular af jamie lewis come back you know it could happen you which think- which uh, i will say the vascular as fuck uh jamie lewis is uh a whole lot bigger than he was before because pitching the people do like I was hold on just a second man my lean body mass okay uh could you go ahead uh lean as fuck Jamie Lewis coming back go ahead oh yeah um, so I was calculating my lean body mass and my uh I was at one point because I think I was using a a a bombs I was up to like 220 and I was real lean but I think a lot of it was water weight and Probably, then I was yeah. immediately like 200 205 again and uh, that was maybe a 10% body fat. So 
like right now at around 230, I'm probably 15% body fat. So I'm definitely carrying more muscle than I was then because I'm also not on Anadrol. And uh, so I'm, uh, I'm interested to see when I do decide to lean out what it looks like because it's going to be – I'm going to – I'm going to look – even more frightening than I already do, I guess. So. I'm calling it right now, man. You, you're, you're not going to get below uh, 195. I'm calling it right now. You're not ever going to be below 200 again. I don't think. You know, it's just, it's just too. Small. Uh, right now, I'm probably end up. And oh. more muscle, so I, I got. Hold I'm, on, I'm doing a... Uh, I'm, Hold on, man. Okay. Let's, let's pause this real quick. We will be right back. And we're back. Uh, that was unnecessarily loud. I don't apologize. So, uh, long story short, we were having a little bit of connection issues, but we are back and we are fine now. So, Jamie, Lu the lean Jamie Lewis is coming back. So, we would... so. I, I don't think you're going to get below 200 at this point, man. Nah, probably not. So, but uh, how would you go about uh, cutting weight as fast as possible? Like body fat. We're not talking just water. Because that's what most people will, will see if they do drastic weight cuts. Is they'll see a lot of water come off. What would you say would be the fastest way to lose weight? Mm. Body fat. Frankly, it's, uh, and I realize this is going to seem ridiculous given how much T Nation rips me off, but I will plug them and say their velocity diet works. Yeah. It's probably, yeah. It's probably the fastest way to cut fat. Okay. Well, there we go. We can go ahead and, uh, yeah. and I'll go ahead for and anybody link who, that too. So that yeah, I it's credit. just the easy peasy Japanesey. It's, um, you just do seven or six shakes a day, and they recommend that you use their metabolic fucktard drive protein, which is insanely expensive. Just use any kind of uh, a protein. Uh, like they recommend blended protein because it absorbs a slow, more slowly. Uh, you're gonna be fucking hungry no matter what. It doesn't really matter what kind of protein you take. Um, I think they're still on the uh, the train of slowly delivered amino acids. That was popular oh, a couple of Christ. while a while back. For a company that was bleeding edge for a long time, they are real behind the times now. They're just still pushing that fucking that whatever. The, <laughs> my cat is going fucking bananas right now. <laughs> um, she does this thing where she gets underneath the bed and uh, she'll pop out from under because she only has one eye, so she looks like a fucking gremlin. She'll pop out from underneath the bed on her back and, like, swat at you a whole bunch of times and then zip back under the bed. Yeah. How she does it, I don't fucking know, but it's hilarious. And so, what, just, what you need to do for uh, April Fool's is you need to change the uh, header on the website, um, uh, uh, Plague of Strength. Uh, you need to get with your graphic designer and have this ready for April Fool's. Uh, just have a picture of the cat and then have the website called Cat of Strength, the header at the top, <laughs> for April Fool's. That would be awesome. Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do think that like, uh, man, just the powerful effect of not eating as much. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the protein <laughs> it is a powerful effect. I'm actually, uh, what I had intended to start today, but uh, the hunger got the best of me yeah. uh, as of like... I guess I started at about 8 a.m. By 9.30, I was already eating food. But I, <laughs> I'm, I'm so deep in the bulk mindset, I just can't. I like It's crazy. But um, So I, I was thinking of doing a, because the Velocity Diet is a protein-sparing modified fast. Yeah. I was thinking about doing a modified protein-sparing modified fast, which is actually what the, uh, what the Apex Predator Diet is. But this is just... Um, Still doing all shakes, but doing it with the uh, Fair Life protein enriched uh, chocolate milk. Yeah, yeah. So just drinking hey. a half gallon of chocolate milk a, a day with protein shakes. But I tried that, and I was so hungry, I was like delirious. Speaking of which, uh, high recommendations for that Fair Life. I mean, it's po it seems like it just popped up overnight. By the way, but I didn't even know other people had talked about. It. I'd never, yeah. and then uh, 
one of my Peter Baker we've had on here. I was like, dude, why didn't you tell me about this shit? And he was like, really? Are you fucking kidding me? And he just starts linking post after post after post after post after post. He was like, I'm certain that I've instant messaged you about this too. And I was like, I think you're just talking shenanigans, but you certainly have mentioned it a lot. And I mean, yeah, practically daily. It's not, <laughs> not only that, but other people in the fitness industry too. It's it's. I mean, it tastes good too. The thing it is, tastes phenomenal. The best. Uh, reason to drink Fairlife, I think, is that is that picture Peter has up in his underwear. I think that's the best reason. He's just I have no idea what the, you're talking about. Yeah, it's you commented on it. It's him holding Fairlife. That's him in his boxers, man. Oh, being a savage. All right, on the internet. S- being a savage. Being a savage. I'm gonna just throw that word around because I know it's thrown around too much already. I, I just feel like, like people just King. need. They just need dictionaries, people. Rise and grind. Because they have just lost touch with what the definitions of words are. Like, nobody sees to know what the word cuckold means anymore. They just bandy it about. Like, it, I guess it means pussy now to most people. It used but to be a fetish. I think the, now, it's, now it's a thing to make fun of. I think the best part about it is that the people who use that fucking term are the most unfuckable bunch of dickheads <laughs> the world has ever seen. Like... Who are you to fucking talk about a cuck? Oh, well, I guess it takes one to know one. Except you'd need a broad in order to fucking be a cuckold in the first place. At least that motherfucker can get a chick you haven't even touched a woman before. So it's like, it's just a bunch of fucking virgins talking shit to each other about shit they don't know about, which is sex. We look forward to your Reddit post. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for that. (laughs) I touched a woman once. I, it was accidental, but she was giving me my change at McDonald's, but I didn't look her in the eye, because women are icky. Uh, R slash premature ejaculation. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so that brings us into, I think, something a little bit closer to home. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is probably the best question we've had on this episode, okay? Now, control All yourself, right. okay? I'm be controlling re- myself. Be respectful. Okay, I'm I'm going to probably regret asking this, um, but this was funny. I had to. How would you go about population control? Hold on. Oh my God, if, this if is Jay- I love this question. If Jamie Lewis had a new world order, the question continues to say Wolfenstein esque like. What would Jamie World look like? Paint us a picture. Would Bryce be allowed to survive, and what role would he have in Jamie Verse? Would Bryce be allowed to survive? Why do they want you dead? You know, I... I don't know. I used to be 430 pounds, so maybe they're trying to call me. I don't know. But you're no longer 430 pounds. And, I mean, That's somebody true. asked me this today, because I, I got a buddy on Facebook who I know through the hardcore scene, and yeah. uh, he asked me for to make a 6X shirt, and uh, somebody was like, how do you feel about that? And I was like, I don't give a fuck. He's, he's not a lifter. He's just a dude who loves the logo. <laughs> um, so like, I, like, if people want to be fat, I, I really don't care. Like, I wouldn't start killing fatties just because they were fat. Um, although, I mean, like, you can't put them in work camps, which is a lot of the problem. Uh, <laughs> so my ideal world is a libertarian society, which can't exist in and of itself. So okay. I would do it like the Spartans did. They had a communist society that was a, like a violent communist society that was sat atop a slave class. So okay. we would create a slave class basically by just going through social media posts and uh, searching for certain keywords. Oh, um, no. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Strap and in. So we would find those keywords. And I'm not going to tell people what the keywords are because then they'll stop using them and then I won't be able to enact this policy. But we would find these certain keywords, and uh, and also anybody who owns athleisure clothing. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> workers, they wouldn't be good workers. But the point is that they would, ju- you know, it. The more the merrier. So we just get as, ma- and it's not like they could fight their way out of this camp anyway, because they're such fucking bitches. Oh my god! Somebody on a side a sidebar. Somebody linked me to uh, some. Uh, I thought he was talking about Timbaland, the the rapper. Okay. And it was Timba Wolf. 
Timberwolf. Okay. Yeah, because I'm because I'm writing about the, uh, one of the articles I have in the works is about uh, Rory Ledermeyer, who was a, a lifter. He was a bodybuilder back in the day. Wait a minute, and, Timberwolf? Uh, Are we talking Killer Instinct? Are we talking Killer Instinct, Timberwolf? I don't know what you're saying. I'll show you later. Okay, anyway. so he's some guy on Instagram who's, I guess, sponsored by a bunch of companies, and he's just like a 155-pound, like, 50-year-old Bruce Lee guy with long hair. And um, okay. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I can't believe you've never heard of him. You would love him. So I go to, I just click on it randomly, click on one thing. It was like, it was really hard for me to talk to people about my depression. He's going right to the camps, directly to the camps. <laughs> Every single one of these fucking, like, bitch-made, fitspo pussies, they're all to the camps. Fit fans. Rise and grind to the camps. Uh, so what I do is I take all these people, I put them into the camps, I would figure out something useful to do with them until grinding them into dust. And for the ones who actually would work hard and perhaps would, like, cause some kind of problem if they managed to escape, I would simply every day have them FaceTime with their family with a gun to their face. Like, if you do anything wrong, we're going to shoot this person, and then we're going to start shooting all these other people. And all of your food will be comprised of their bodies. Um, so we do that. Oh, and uh, Yeah, and we just gradually keep paring down the unuseful uh, to the point where we had a breeding population of slaves left, and then a useful society of libertarians atop it. Okay. So that, that pretty sum, much sums up. Now, would it have a Mad Max aesthetic, or would it have, like, a Blade Runner? I mean, what's going on here? I, I really wouldn't force anybody to, uh, to adopt a certain aesthetic. I mean, I, okay. I, have, my own, I have my own style that, that, that apparently the Internet does not like, but, uh, I, you know, I like camo cargo shorts, and apparently it's not cool to wear cargo shorts, and sleeveless deathcore band shirts. That's about all I wear. I'm not going to force other people to dress like that because it would be boring if everybody dressed the same. So, yeah. And plus, if you made everybody dress in, like, car tire armor, then you wouldn't be able to go to Wasteland Fest, which I'm definitely, <laughs> you definitely know, going that, to Wasteland Fest, and I will take many yeah. pictures. Well, please do. Also, uh, so what, what fashion would go, though? So, like, there has to be something on your mind that has to just be burned with fire. I think that's just one of those things where I wouldn't ban anything. Uh, I would just make that uh, one of the – it'd be one of the things we used for culling. So, for instance, if you wear athleisure wear, you know, if you are a man who owns a pair of pastel uh, capri joggers, you're going to the camps. Okay. Well, you, you've heard it here, guys. So he is a uh, omnipotent leader. Uh, he loves his public, and uh, do I get to I would survive? be a very benevolent ruler, I, I tell you this. Do, do I get to survive, though? Yeah, I, I don't know why we're killing you. Okay. Well, hey. Is it your vocal fry? Is that what people uh, want you dead for? I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> I can't even fucking do it. Like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh so I, I, I think that, uh, what would my role be though? What would be, what would be my role? You never men mentioned that. Uh, you could be like my reverse Luther from, uh, Key and Peele, you know, Luther, the anger translator, <laughs> you, for, to the people in the camps, you could be like the, uh, I'm so sorry. You know, he just doesn't like that. I'm going to just have to ask you to just be in the camp. Did yeah, I, I think I think you do. I think you would do well at that. Oh my god! Yeah, that you know what? I think that kind of plays to my nature. You know, I'm. I'm yeah, you a would be my pleaser. sensitivity translator. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm fucking down. Um. And it pays me. Oh, and by the way, my title would be Overlord. Okay. There's a. I just that the president does not have the same type of ring to it as Overlord does. Yeah. So, I, I think oh, that'll and, lead us... And in terms of liquidations, uh, we would definitely liquidate just about every politician, just right out of the gate. Trump would definitely go first. Would there and be then any I'd work that would survive? Uh, I like Paul Ryan. I'd probably let him live. 
I think I would let um I would let Barbara Boxer live just to troll the alt right. Uh, like while any... I was getting around to enslaving them, I, I think just having her plus having her run the camps would be phenomenal. Okay. Just lording her over them all the whole times, making them pray to her every morning. Ah, uh, that would make my day. What would you? What would be a th- something that you would actually change? Like, uh, when it comes to movies, would you would you require that every person in an action movie actually lift? No, not at all. I'm really okay. not. I, I, I'm not into making anything compulsory. I don't know if you've noticed that about me, but I um. I don't like being forced to do things. I, 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 I don't really like rules in general, but being forced to do things is... I, it's just against everything that I, uh, that I believe in. So I, I really wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't be forcing anybody to do anything. You know, I get you, man. I, uh, you know, there was at a one time where I just... Um, I, I really had my mind set on joining the military. You know, because my dad's ex-military and there's military in my family and stuff like that. and That's fine and good, and I have respect for the military. You know, I want to point that out because apparently if you don't want to join the military, you don't have respect for them because people, you know, the internet. Um, I have, uh, I'm just not the type of guy to take orders well. You know, I, I have that same stuff in me. I have that same fire in me to just, I, I would be insubordinate in like three seconds. It asked me <laughs> to do something I didn't want to do. And then I just wouldn't do it. And then they'd be like, eh, you're not a fit here. Why don't we just discharge you? I think, uh, I think what, that's why. While we're on the subject of the military, uh, yeah. I, one thing I find very irksome is that if you're not patriotic, you hate the military, which I find absurd because uh, the people who founded the country were not patriotic people, for one. And for another, uh, just because you're not running around like uh, – you know, jacking your dick over the military and thanking everybody for their service. I I think you'd be very hard pressed to find people who w- join the military because they want to fight for our country. They join the military because they want free college, they want a job, and probably they want to kill people and get away with it. In in the cases of like the the people who are in fighting forces. Uh, well, maybe some so, people. I do know that there are some that just love to fight for our country. Like my dad. He was he was very patriotic. I mean, it was it was in his blood to do to do that. So, and same thing yeah. with uh, my my nephew Roger. He's actually up in one of the hardest places ever to be ever in. So he's over there in Bahara, and uh, he's actually one of the guys in the military who. Um, yeah, this is kind of an aside, but he's one of the guys that uh, basically is in pitch black, looking for ships crossing this barrier. That's basically the front lines of defense for the country, um, or for, uh, you know, traffic. I, I, I'm probably speaking out of turn. I should probably shut my fucking mouth, but he, <laughs> he really seems to love uh, being in the military. I, I, uh, and I don't have a problem with that, but yeah. I don't, like, I, you know, it's not, it's not like I have to run around and, like, jack off my yeah, mailman because no. he's delivering the mail. And, uh, quite frankly, I think the mailman is... Doing Wait, far more to uh, is that to, part of like, the is that part of the job description? Do you get free hand job? Wait a minute, hold on. I want to sign. No, up. I think Wait my I think my mom just did it because I'm not oh, sure. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh. so I mean, yeah, to the to the guys who are in the military, I'm not saying you suck or anything like that. I'm just saying like all this patriotism is all just like false bravado and bullshit, and it's annoying. It annoys me. Yeah, but it's it's about time for us to do an Army Rangers donation too. But hey, oh, well, we'll we'll show that. We'll we'll talk. About and that hey, later. if there's any Army but, Rangers out there who need hand jobs, uh, just yeah. PM me, and we'll we'll get you sorted. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I I do know a girl who will send you tits if you are if you are in the military because she understands when you're deployed. You know, sometimes you need to see a vagina. Hashtag so, rise and grind. So hey, there you go. She's <laughs> just gonna grind on her camera. Hell yeah. Um, so we got this question. Let's lead us into another one. Uh, when can we see an article on pull-ups and do you make a distinction between chin-ups and pull-ups? If so, what's the difference? Now we talked about this, so you have one written. Yes, it is. It's done. It's just, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to just because, you know, I, I don't want you can explain the situation without, um, oops. You can explain the situation without being getting into too much uh, 
Well, it actually it actually just goes to like if you say because I have there are a lot of people who read my site and this other site, oh, and yeah. I don't want them getting hit with the same goddamn article twice in a week because you know because uh, of coincidence. So right. um, so you know I'm just spreading it out a little bit, but yeah, I do differentiate between pull ups and chin ups, as does anybody who knows the definition of the two words. Chin ups are palms facing your face, and pull ups are palms facing away from your face. Um, and I would call neutral grip, uh, I would call them pull-ups. Um, but in any event... Uh, What's your favorite grip? Um, I, I... Well, I'd never do chin-ups. Uh, with a torn bicep, it would just fucking crush my arm. Uh, like, it just causes cramping, and it's it just doesn't work. Um, so I do... Uh, I just do pull-ups. Um, I, I feel like neutral grip pull-ups are kind of cheating because uh, for me they're way easier than regular pull-ups so I don't really do them um, I just started doing uh, weighted pull-ups again yesterday in fact I, I spent about an hour doing weighted pull-ups and then switched to doing a shitload of rows with my awesome mag bar but um, oh, yeah, yeah uh, but I uh, yeah, so this, my pull-up article, just so everybody knows, I have no idea what the other guy wrote, uh, so I, it, I don't know, I highly doubt that it's the same thing. I've written before about the use of negative pull-ups if you, if you suck at pull-ups, so it covers the using negative pull-ups to bring up your pull-ups, and then goes into one-arm pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, and that sort of thing. What um, do you think about these assisted pull-up machines? Oh, for fuck's sake. That is one of those things. It would be like a person who is using a wheelchair to learn how to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's actually a really, really good analogy, but uh, that's exactly yeah. what I think of it. It is just as absurd to think you're going to use a wheelchair to learn how to walk as it is to think that you're going to use those assisted pull-up machines to eventually do a pull-up. You know, I, uh, I agree with you and disagree with you for certain reasons, right? So I think that if you can't do a pull-up and you do not have access to a lat pull-down machine, but for some reason have access to an assisted pull-up machine, especially if you're a beginner, you could do the assisted pull-ups to get the same benefit as a lat pull-down, but just stick with the just stick with the lat pull-downs if you really I mean, am I safe to assume that you agree with that? Just the lat pull-downs are superior to the assisted pull-up machine. Yeah, but again, it, yeah. it really, if you want to get good at pull-ups and you suck at them, negative pull-ups are the way to go. And I'm actually considering just doing a test of the efficacy of this. I know for a fact that it works, but the thing that I've never tried to do it on is to get stupid good at, um, at uh, weighted pull-ups. Um right. I think the record for a uh, for a weighted pull up right now is two hundred forty pounds or thereabouts, um, which is incredible. Um, oh yeah, yeah. How many plates is that? Jesus Christ! So That's, three plates. Is that... Three plates is one thirty five. So it's um, it's around five plates. But is that plates and chains, or is that just plates? Like, what's the? I imagine they weighted. I, I, I imagine they. Whoops. Eh. I look uh, up, I'm, that's I imagine they weighted everything. Yeah, yeah. That weighed everything. Weighted everything. Well, I mean, is it? Uh, did he have like? Because distributing the weight in order to get that would be a little bit difficult. So the way I would probably do it is I would do a maximum of four plates, make up the rest with chains, and possibly a weighted vest. That way, I can just uh, distribute the weight more evenly and allow myself to get more pull ups out of the. Man, I'm probably too think overthinking this too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably at that point, I, I weight is weights. I, I think. Yeah. Because I like even getting up for a pull up with uh, with one thirty five around your waist is a bitch. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three plates is just difficult to get up up there and do. Yeah, I can't. I can't do three plates. I can do two, but I can't do three. So uh, need to up my game then. But, um, yeah, I think that about covers it. I will say that it kind of leads into this next question, which I have, a, I have an aside for. But uh, have you ever used resistance bands, and how do you implement them? Same with kettlebells. The aside that I had was, have you ever seen these people do negative pull-ups 
with the stupid ass resistance bands. Yeah, that's right. a CrossFit thing, I think. Okay, so I I would. Oh, and suggest... Glass Glassman just and I do cover kipping pull ups. For the record, there's nothing fucking wrong with kipping pull ups. If you think there's something wrong with kipping pull ups, you're a fucking moron. Kipping pull ups are essentially push presses, and if you dislike push presses and jerks, then I guess you've got a whole other set of fucking problems that that, that don't even bear discussing. Um, but Everybody that's what it right. is. The kipping pull up is a push press. A butterfly pull up is a snatch. Right there, you go. Or it's not a snatch; it's a jerk. So, so have you uh, ever used resistance bands? How do you implement them in single? I pull-up? use them for curls and overhead presses and triceps when I when I can't get to the gym. But that's it. I or sometimes really just like, when I'm watching TV. Yeah, I really like them for rear delt stuff because you don't need a lot of weight doing like that little tiny itsy bitsy muscle. And have you ever done high rep rear delt flies with bands? No. It's killer. It's killer for pump. It sounds so um, fun. Oh, hell yeah. Like, I'll do 30 of them bitches. But, um, so kettlebells. How do you how do you implement kettlebells into a workout? I don't. Okay. <laughs> that uh, was occasionally, simple. I'll do hammer curls with them. Like, because uh, you really have to use your forearms to, like, 30 pound kettlebells and then just yeah. keep them like keep them out straight from your hand. You got to grip the fuck out of the, the uh, handle. But uh, yeah, other than that now, I don't, I don't go in for that. I, I, I really don't understand the purpose of kettlebells. I mean, I've written about the purpose of kettlebells, but they were invented because they didn't have fucking dumbbells. I get. And the, I'm sure uh, some dickhead is going to get in the fucking comments oh, with know. goblet yeah. slots. Get the fuck out of here with goblet squats. <laughs> I don't ever want to see another fucking pussy in my gym doing a goddamn goblet squat. Learn either squat like an adult with dignity and self-respect, or get the fuck out of the gym. The end. By the way, if you're doing goblet squats and you don't go uh, at the top, you're doing them wrong. So If you do goblet <laughs> squats and listen to this podcast, fucking stop. We don't want you. We never have. I don't fucking like you. I would slap you in the face with an open hand if I ever saw you because you're too much of a bitch to punch. Uh, he doesn't mean that. Please subscribe. So. Oh, I absolutely mean that. <laughs> Stop listening. <laughs> no, please subscribe. So. Stop listening. Uh, we're, we're torn. So. No, we're not. Uh, it, this is very definitive. <laughs> From chaos and pain and plague of strength, we hate you. We hate your face. We hate your fucking family. We don't even like your friends. Stop listening. Thank you. And this is Bryce's sensitivity uh, translator. Uh, please subscribe. So, what equipment... Don't subscribe. <laughs> what equipment would you fill a home gym with for a budget of $1,000? And I think after this, we'll jump into some quick ones. Jesus Christ, this thing's already gone like two hours. I know, I know. I, I'm starving. Uh, so... All right, uh, let's let's go, let's go quick. Uh, no, no, for a thousand dollars, for a thousand dollars, you could get basically every piece of equipment you could want uh, on Craigslist. So I would just, I would get a decent rack. You don't need a fucking crazy ass rack. I set a world record in a shitty chrome rack. You don't need, you don't need the like, you don't need the best equipment on the planet. I'd get a used rack that wasn't gonna fucking fall down and kill me. I would get a bar that was rated at fifteen hundred pounds. I would get that new. Then I would buy as many plates as I could possibly buy with the remaining money along with a bench. And, um, I mean, I really like using cables, but if I'm just doing a home gym, I'm not going to put cables in there. I would get a, one of those, uh, body master squat machines that I could use for a Viking press. And there you go. I'm done. Yeah. I would get, uh, for the cables, I would get one of those things that you can actually attach to your rack. They're relatively inexpensive for about 150 bucks. But they make your rack into a cable machine too. So, oh, that's fancy. Oh uh, yeah. You know, I'd like to have some dumbbells too. I, like, I, I think you can get a lot done with just two dumbbells though. So I'd probably get a dumbbell that was around like thirty pounds, and then a dumbbell that was around sixty pounds. Don't try and do it all in one afternoon too. Like, try and try and get this equipment over the period of a year because sometimes you'll run into these deals where people say, if you have a truck and you haul this off, you get it for free. Those are your banger deals. You need to get those. So yeah, get keep, free keep your eye on 
yeah. on Craigslist. And just keep accruing it over time. Uh, like like Bryce said, it's that's not something you want to go. You want to just fly out of the gates and think you're going to just fill your your garage with equipment. Yeah. Just sit on Craigslist and look for deals because you'll find crazy shit on there. Uh, okay, we'll we'll do rapid fire. Uh, this one kind of has to do with Plague of Strength, so I thought you would like this. And um, what is your vision for the new Plague of Strength blog? Uh, it is to ramp up the insanity that uh, of the K, uh, the Chaos and Pain blog. Um, I really want to focus more on the, like the esoterica, like uh, like the article I just wrote about. Uh, about chaos magic, I'll be doing stuff on blood magic. Uh, I'm going to be doing more interviews with strange people that you've never heard of. Um, that answers ranging, the question. Ranging from occult people to uh, pro wrestlers to um, to a strong woman that I really like. And I got a low battery on my uh, headphones, so we really have to wrap this up. What about Bud? Are we going to have him back on? Oh, definitely. Bud's great. Okay. And then. Um... We'll save the rest for later because reasons. Yes. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video. If you want to subscribe, you know where unless, that button is by now. Unless you goblet spot, in which no, case, listen, fuck off and die. Listen, be respectful. So, subscribe. <laughs> um, and if you dislike this video, we look forward to your Reddit post. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Which, by the way, the next one is our incel revisit. Woohoo! Ah, we might even actually film that one because I'm getting my couch uh, delivered this week. That answered another question. Hell yeah! All right, guys, have a good one. Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, to hear the lamentation of the women. That is good. That is good. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no love and that's fine. Fuck local radio stations, I got more plays than all of these rabbits combined. I'm going, I'm going again, I've been going in, I'm fed up with so many things. I gotta just let it all out, I'm talking about the shit they've been talking about. Telling me I should do this, telling me I should do that. Telling me, telling me things about rap. Talking the truth and that stab in my back, they will knock me off track. No, no, too many things have been building, been hard to deal with, I just been drinking. Remember my moves in the past, I'm wondering what was I thinking Lately I'm living in fear, wondering what if the end is so near All of this shit going on, the shootings are strong One shot to the head and I'm gone, I'm losing control but I can't let it go Cause I'm trying to get more and I've been in the moment I've been in the zone and I'm moving alone I don't pick up the phone when my family call, I've been doing it wrong And I don't know what's happening, trying to get what I've just been imagining Getting close and I've just been examining All of the fake shit the game has been packaging Babylon pleases you, Kram So grant me one request Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then I hell with you. I come from a town where most of the people are so close-minded They go into school and they work in a job but they don't even like it I won't be put in a box, nobody telling me what I should rock Nobody telling me what I should drop cause I do what I want and just know I don't stop Recording till 4 in the morning, they snoring, I'm pouring my soul into every story I'm writing, producing, I mix it, I master, I'm building my craft and I'm not looking back I've been going doing things I wanna do when I want to Everybody wanna get away but they not do Everybody wanna copy you but they not you Everybody wanna be cool but they not new Whoa, look how I go, gonna be a dentist, I still got the flow Never gonna lose Cause I'm still doing both Never go lose cause I've been on the road Come to your state and I'm killing the show Know that I'm young and I still gotta grow Know that I'm working the most No, I'm never gonna choke And I'm looking back down on the people below I've been keeping real I've been doing what I feel I've been out here trying to kill Every beat I know I will